Top story. Most candidates in Senegal's delayed presidential election and a large group of civil society activists said today they would refuse to take part in talks proposed by President Macky Sall to decide a date for the vote he postponed earlier this month. Saul is facing pressure inside and outside the country to set a date after his abrupt delay of the February 21st, 25th poll triggered weeks of political crisis. Reporter Alfa Jallo in Dakar tells VOA's Carol Van Dam that in a televised interview with five media outlets late yesterday, he put off a decision on the date until after talks with political and social actors early next week. He reiterated that he is going to step down when his mandate ends at the, on the 2nd of April. But actually, he didn't say when he is going to do that. He said that that is just going to be determined when he meet the opposition and all the political, political actors during what he called a you know, consultation, which he said he will, it will start on Monday going through our Tuesday. So if they reach a consensus, then he can just set a date for the election. But he said that he has no interest to extend his mandate. But on the other hand, too, he cannot just leave this country when the country has not set a date for the ele- election where there is no president to replace him. Did he also say that he didn't think that there would be time to hold elections before April 2nd? Yes, he said that it all depends on the outcome of the consultation that he has invited the political actors. He said that maybe that's why he said that he, he is not going to drag it so long. It starts on Monday, Tuesday, and uh, if they agree, then they can set a date. Although there are so many opposition leaders, especially the presidential candidate, whose candidacy has been validated by the Constitutional Council, some of them have started, you know, fixing their own date. Some of them are saying the election can be fixed on the 3rd of March or some of them saying on the 10th of March. I mean, balloting, maybe they can be able to do that before the expiry of President Saul's mandate on the 2nd of April 2024. And what have these presidential candidates said about Maki Saul's decision to do this, to delay the elections? Yes, some of them are saying that Maki Sall is just trying to buy time. Some of them are saying that he is just disrespecting the Constitutional Council recommendation that, I mean, he has to fix the election in the nearest, you know, or in the best, you know, time, or he has to fix the election without delay. They see, they, they don't know, or they, are, they don't know, or they don't see what President Macky Sall have to say when he meet these political actors in this two days consultation, because there's no room as you know that the Muslim holy month of Ramadan will just be, will be kicking uh, in two weeks' time. And if they are supposed to be, you know, I mean, a campaign period, most of the presidential aspirants will be giving at least, according to the Constitution, 21 days period to crisscross the country. But this time around, that is not going to be ha- happening. Maybe the time will be limited. Maybe they will be giving each 10 days or 15 days. Was this meeting that he had with the reporters, was it a back and forth where reporters were allowed to ask questions or did he just basically make a speech and leave? No, no, no. All the, yeah, all the four media houses were allocated time to ask questions. And uh, basically they have asked the same question. And the same question they, they've been asking the president is, you know, when he, when he is going to switch the, the election and whether he will respect the constitution that after the expiry of his I mean, mandate, um, he will step down. He said that he will certainly step down, but he also cannot, you know, make sure that he will step down when a new president is not elected. That is reporter Alpha Jallo speaking to VOA's Carol Van Dam from Dakar, Senegal. As we just reported earlier in the week, 15 candidates in Senegal's delayed presidential election accused President Macky Sall of ill will and said they will take action to ensure a new poll is swiftly arranged. For an in-depth analysis, I asked Alex Vines, who leads the Africa program and is currently managing director for risk, ethics and resilience at Chatham House, why did Macky Sall try to delay the vote? Well, that's such a good question. Um, why is he trying to delay the, the presidential election? I mean, thankfully, he's accepted the 
the ruling of the Constitutional Council that, that he needs to uh, have an election by the, the time that he steps step down, that his mandate expires. So that is that is progress. But there's plenty of other uncertainties, uh, including whether opposition candidates like uh, the, one of the leading opposition leaders, Songo, is released from detention. Uh, and there is a real tension in, in Senegal around all of this. So, so it, it is high drama, but at least Macky Sall has recognized that, that his original plan, which was to have elections in December this year, that uh, he could not continue to, to, to pursue that ambition, given that the, uh, the Constitutional uh, Council has ruled that that was illegal. So it is important that, 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 that Senegalese institutions uh, are, are shown to, to, to actually have effectiveness. And, and so this is certainly an important step back from an even worse crisis that we could have seen. Alex, uh, in a West African region where four countries are currently under military rule, Senegal is, is seen by the international community as one of the few examples of a functioning democracy. So if Senegal were to become another authoritarian state, many fear the instability that would ensue would threaten regional security. What are your thoughts on that? Well, Senegal is an anchor state. That's what we would describe it in, in the policy world. And unlike its neighbors, it has never had a coup. So it is completely immune to, to that so far. And there is real concern amongst the Senegalese themselves of erosion, uh, potentially, of civil liberties. So uh, nobody wants to see a pluralistic anchor state like Senegal deteriorate. Investors are looking closely at Senegal. There are some big projects, including on, on, on kind of gas investments, where people are beginning to wonder you know, what the country's trajectory is. At the moment, the assumption is that the country will pass through this crisis in the short to midterm. And so money is sticking with Senegal. But it just goes to show the vulnerability of the country longer term uh, if this was to continue. And, and, and so let's say Banki Sal uh, actually uh, allows the presidential election to go. Will he be running for uh, another term or wh wh what is the scenario? Uh, uh, Macky Sal has been very clear that he won't run again. So that has, he's been consistent in May, sending that message. Macky Sal was looking for a, a, a protege and had originally put his faith in Mr. Ba, but increasingly that looked uh, like a fraying relationship. And also Ba did not seem to necessarily carry the popularity he was hoping for. Uh, and so um, he has a, a problem now of trying to find a candidate that, uh, that, that he would be comfortable with to succeed him. So that, I think, is one of the, the issues that is, is, uh, Macky Sall is, is, is having trouble over right now. The UN Human Rights Office said in a new report Friday that dozens of people, including children, have been victims of rape and other forms of sexual violence in the ongoing conflict in Sudan, attacks which could be assimilated to war crimes. Sudan plunged into chaos in mid-April when clashes broke out in the capital Khartoum between rival Sudanese forces, the country's army led by General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan and paramilitary function known as the name Rapid Support Forces under the command of General Mohammed Hamdan Dagaru. The fighting quickly spread across the country, particularly to urban areas, but also to the restive West Darfur region. To date, they have killed at least 12,000 people and caused more than 80 million people to flee their homes, according to reports. The report, which covers a period from the start of fighting to December 15th, documents abuses in a country that has been largely inaccessible to aid groups and rights monitors recently. Obscuring the impact of a conflict that has been overshadowed by wars in places such as Gaza and Ukraine. The report said that at least 118 people were victims of sexual violence, including rape, and that most of the attacks were carried out by members of parliamentary forces, paramilitary forces in homes and on the streets. 
One woman, according to the UN, was detained in a building and subjected to repeated gang rapes over 35 days. The report also documents the recruitment of child soldiers by both parties to the conflict. Some of these violations would amount to war crimes, said Volker Tuck, the UN Human Rights Chief, calling for prompt, thoroughly and independent investigations into allegations of abuse and human rights violations. The report is based on interviews with more than 300 victims and witnesses, some of which were conducted in Ethiopia and Chad, neighboring countries where many Sudanese have fled, as well as analysis of photographs, videos and satellite images taken in conflict zones. The UN cited a video released last week in North Kordofan set showing men wearing Sudanese army uniforms and carrying several heads of members of the rival, rival paramilitary function.